Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Only Stupid Answers. My name is DJ Wooldridge, and I am here with you today with a very special review for Disney's Mulan 2020 edition. So as you may know, Disney has a classic animated film known as Mulan. As you may also know, Disney has been big in the business of taking those classic animated films and updating them into live action iterations. And of course, they couldn't miss a classic like Mulan. Mulan's the best, next to Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin and Lion King. The synopsis for this new version of Mulan is as follows. Acclaimed filmmaker Nikki Caro brings the epic tale of China's legendary warrior to life in Disney's Mulan, in which a fearless young woman risks everything out of love for her family and her country to become one of the greatest warriors China has ever known. This, as I stated earlier, is directed by Nikki Caro, who's known for Whale Rider and The Zookeeper's Wife, and is written by Rick Jaffa, Amanda Silver, Elizabeth Martin, and Laura Hynek. Not one of those people seem to be of Chinese ancestry. Of course, I'm not necessarily the one to talk about all of that. It's just something that stood out to me. This is, of course, based on, or as it's stated in the credits, suggested by the narrative poem, The Ballad of Mulan. But as we all know, it is actually a live action adaptation of the animated feature Mulan that came out in 1998, 22 years ago, much different time. <laughs> this movie is starring Yi Fei Lu as Mulan, Donnie Yen as Commander Tung, Gong Li as Jian Hyung, Jet Li as the Emperor, Jason Scott Lee as Bori Khan, Yo San An as Hang Hui, and Tima as Xiao, and Hu Li as Village Magistrate. Now you might be like, DJ, why are you talking about the Village Magistrate? Because uh, it's played by Hun Li. If you know me, you know I'm a big fan of Banshee, and Hoon Lee played Job in that show, who was the best character on that show, and Hoon Lee is great, and I was bummed he was not in more of the movie. You better brace yourself. Here come the mother neighborhood. All right, let's get down to business to defeat the Huns. They're not Huns in this movie. They're, they're Rubens, which is closer to the original story. Just... All right, things I liked about this movie. First up, of course, I gotta mention the great cast. Standouts, of course, are Donnie Yen, who gets a few moments to flex those martial arts muscles, and they are, of course, insane. I'm not talking about his literal muscles, although I'm sure those are insane, too. I'm talking about just his skills and his abilities. Of course, Disney fans may recognize him as Chirut Imwe from Rogue One, and of course, Jet Li as the Emperor. It's Jet Li, you're not gonna cast him if the Emperor doesn't get to do at least a few things badass, so it's a little bit of a different take on the Emperor, but also a little bit of a different role than we're used to seeing Jet Li in. I already mentioned Hoon Lee, Hoon Lee is great, and he's great in Banshee, and you should check out Banshee. Get in the fucking car, or I will run you into a wall and say my foot slipped off the clutch. And of course, Tai Ma, who's just one of those actors that every time he shows up in a movie or TV show, it just warms your heart. It makes me happier to be watching anything with him in it. The movie is packed with colorful, vibrant production design that is beautiful to look at. And there are fun Wuja-esque action sequences throughout the movie. Now, for the things that didn't quite click for me, kind of the movie, like a lot of live action Disney adaptations, this feels less like an adaptation of the animated classic and more like an adaptation of the Wikipedia entry of that animated classic. <laughs> in that things happen in the movie because they happened in the original, but the movie doesn't really spend a lot of time investing in its own narrative logic to make the audience feel the progression of the plot and the characters. For instance, we know Mulan loves her dad because the characters say that they care about each other and we've seen the original and she loves her dad in that. And of course you cast Tima as Zhao, the father, and he's innately lovable. But I can't point to like a specific scene that made me feel like I really believe this girl would sacrifice everything for her father. Similarly, references to iconic musical cues or classic songs like Reflection will come out of nowhere for seemingly no reason other than, hey, you remember the original? You remember? But they aren't made to feel like an organic part of this movie. And that is emblematic of the movie as a whole. Things happen and you're like, oh, I kind of remember that from the original. And that's it. It's not just Mulan that does this. I mean, it kind of feels that way with a lot of these live action adaptations, right? Beauty and the Beast. Aladdin. They don't function as their own movies. They function as time capsules of a thing you enjoyed when you were a kid. I don't know if a kid watching this movie now could possibly have the same emotional reaction us adults did when we were watching these movies as children. Now, before we go any further, let me answer some of your questions. If you'd like to submit questions for reviews, you can do that at our Discord by going to patreon.com slash onlystupidanswers. Joey asks, was there anything from the original you missed? This movie is promising me exactly zero dragons and zero singing and therefore isn't making me happy. So from what I understand, many changes were made to accommodate 
global audiences and more specifically Chinese audiences, which makes sense considering the subject matter of this movie. There's a lot of scenes and moments and characters that we as Americans and audiences abroad love that didn't really play well with Chinese audiences. And so a lot of things were adjusted to accommodate that. For instance, the powerful moment where Mulan cuts off her hair, apparently Chinese warriors wouldn't have done that. They would have worn their hair long. So it was silly to Chinese audiences. Producer Jason Reed stated, we immediately get like mocked for that in meetings in China. Like, oh, you're gonna have her cut her hair off again? And so we've had to make those choices because now we have another audience to take into account. It's finding a balance. Just like the idea of these like Disney execs like going into a meeting and all these Chinese execs are like pointing and laughing. I said there were things that I missed and they're the things you mentioned. I missed both the music and Mushu. While I understand the exclusion of both in this remake, the new movie doesn't really create worthy substitutes. Okay, a jokey sidekick dragon doesn't track in China, that's fine, but there's really no comedic character or anything humorous really to fill that void. Similar with the music, A Girl With Fighting For and I'll Make A Man Out Of You actually told us a lot about Mulan's supporting cast. Without those songs, I really couldn't tell you anything about the supporting characters in this movie other than one is dreamy and the other one is a vague reference to a character from the original, but I won't spoil that here. Finally, Danny asks the question that's probably on everybody's mind, is Mulan worth $30? And I'm gonna say, yeah, actually. Why? Because Disney is making this available to audiences without having to risk their health, the health of their family, or the health of these poor theater employees that are having to go to work, even though it's not safe. And I honestly really appreciate that. I'm kind of frustrated that movies like New Mutants and Tenant are forcing audiences to put themselves in precarious positions just to see a movie. And I love theaters. I love going to theater. I love seeing a movie on the big screen. I love supporting that. I love the communal effervescence you get by seeing a movie on the big screen. I love all of it. I want it to come back. Let me out of this room, please. I've been trapped in here for months. But it's not safe right now. Theaters in particular are not safe. There's gonna be a link in the description kind of breaking down why theaters in general are not the safest place to be right now. So the fact that Disney is actually making this available to audiences at home for a cost, yes, I think is a step in the right direction. I think honestly is probably the right thing to do right now. I mean, for instance, my wife and I watched it together. 30 bucks is essentially what we would have spent to go to the theaters. So it's not really that far off. And you'll get to watch it as many times as you want because basically what you're buying is early access. Once you have premier access to Mulan, you can watch it as many times as you want on any platform where Disney Plus is available. If you love Disney movies in general and the live action remakes in particular or are a huge Mulan fan, I'd say, yeah, you should spend the money. Now, for my final score, as you know, most movie reviewers like to do a score out of like 10 or five or something like that, but we're not most reviewers over here at Only Stupid Answers. We like to do something unique. We like to do something special. We like to pick a random number out of the story and review it out of that. So it has been 22 years since the original animated Mulan came to theaters. And I'm gonna rate the new Mulan, the 2020 Mulan, out of 22. And so my rating would be like, a C, C's get degrees, solid C, all right, which is uh, what, like a 17.5? I don't know, I'm not good at math. I'm not on YouTube because I'm great at math, okay? That's it, that's my final score, 17 out of 22. All you math majors out there can tell me whether I'm close to a C or not. But let me know in the comments, are you willing to spend the $30 to see the movie? If you have seen it, what did you think? What's your rating out of 22? You gotta do it out of 22 like I did. Let me know in the comments down below. Like, subscribe, all that jazz. Let me know if you like this setup for reviews. We've got more reviews coming down the pipe. Specifically, there's gonna be a review of the season two premiere of The Boys coming out tomorrow. Also, if you want a spoiler discussion about Mulan, tune into next Monday's Only Stupid Answers podcast. We're gonna be deep diving into Mulan. All the spoilers, all the stuff we can talk about here. You can follow me at DJ Talks Trash. You can follow Only Stupid Answers at Only Stupid Answers every place that matters, but you're gonna to wanna to yank the vowels out of stupid on Twitter. Thank you all for joining me. Now let's go kick some honey buns. Wait, it's just not a line in the 2020 Mulan remake. Spoilers. <laughs>